Hello, everybody. Uh, Way 3 News meteorologist Brian Good here with today's edition of Storm Talk. Uh, we've got a lot to discuss for the longer term more than anything, although there is a bit of snow that we will cover in the shorter term here in just a second. On the monitoring board, it's mainly involving next week. It's going to be uh, not one particular system that is going to impact this next week, but several that could hit us in a repeated fashion. And we'll get into uh, details on that coming up here in just a few moments. First off, though, let's talk about today and how tonight is going to play out for us. Uh, clouds uh, held on tough throughout most of the morning period. They're now eroding away as we're getting some drier air to work its way in. We're seeing more and more of that blue sky overhead, and that's allowing for uh, temperatures to respond. We're in the upper 30s now. We should cross 40 uh, for an hour or two this afternoon. Then tonight, after midnight, here's our next system now diving in across the Dakotas. It is going to streak southeast into uh, the Ohio Valley and Tennessee Valley later tonight. Now, initially, uh, we can tell by looking at the cloud pattern here in the satellite, a lot of cirrus clouds, that there's a lot of Virgo, there's a lot of dry air ahead of the system. So that has to be overcome first, uh, later tonight and early tomorrow. So we may see some snow break out on the radar later tonight after midnight and tomorrow morning over some parts of wave country, but I really doubt any of that will reach the ground. But it, it won't take long for it to saturate, and that'll be the issue for tomorrow morning that could cause a burst of snow for some areas. This is how Futurecast sees the event later tonight. Here are the wind arrows, and here are the temperatures. We cloud back up. Again, these are cirrus clouds for the most part until after midnight. And then we'll begin to see some returns on the radar picking up on a little bit of light snow. This may be flurries, but I don't see being anything more than that through at least uh, the morning commute. Then after that, we should saturate, and we'll see a band at that point of precipitation that will reach the ground uh, just after sunrise. Those temperatures, though, above freezing, but this would be a burst of wet snow that uh, at this point in the day, and given the potential rate, it can accumulate on grass areas in some locations, uh, depending on where the heaviest bursts are. And elevation's key. So those of you that are way to the east toward I-75 have a better chance because your elevation to see some of that stick to grass areas. And then as we have throughout the midday time frame, we'll warm up to all rain, except for the I-75 corridor. Now I like how the RPM model is picking up on that idea that we may have uh, some wet snow linger longer in the bluegrass area of Kentucky and eastern Kentucky. That seems very plausible. We've seen that many times. The rest of us, though, should be more of a rain event, but a cold rain at that. And then as the system pulls away in the evening, we may see that snow area try to expand again before the atmosphere dries itself out. And then Friday, maybe another day, just like today, we may be a, a challenge to get rid of the clouds on Friday. Uh, so I've lowered the numbers just a tad here on Friday. Uh, keeping that idea at play, it may be a cool day and maybe some spotty drizzle or even a flurry off to the east, but uh, not exactly the best couple of days coming our way to end the week here. So, what about snowfall? Well, the computer models um, overall have a general theme for most of them. That would be north and east. And I was focusing on the idea, yeah, north and east, maybe Jennings and Jackson picking up a grass accumulation, but still focusing on uh, areas around the, um, the bluegrass area for picking up some accumulating snow. The RPM... As you saw there, really impacting more for Jefferson County, Indiana, Jennings all the way into Lexington, maybe some grass accumulation. I like the look of the RPM. I do like the look of the Euro when it comes to the idea there could be some enhancement on our southeast corner of our viewing area as well. Some grass accumulations, maybe at Dare County. I wouldn't rule that out. So uh, kind of a blend here is what I'm looking at of the RPM and the Euro when it comes to locations that could see some grass accumulations. The GFS thinks it's broad brushing too much of the area with a general snow amount. And I don't see that being that broad brush. I think it's going to be much more focused on elevation and uh, where snowfall rates could be their highest point. And that looks to be north and east of Louisville. All right, so looking at the Shreff model, it is picking up on the idea of, again, starting off as a mixture or all snow and then quickly going to all rain throughout the afternoon. As far as snow amounts, the black line, as we look at the average, it's given us only about two tenths of an inch of accumulation. Not a big deal. There are a couple of members that try to say up to two inches. Potentially, but that would be just the idea that the models, uh, the various versions of this model, are picking up the idea of maybe a heavier rate could fall, or temperatures may be, may, uh, be colder than indicated um, at the time the snow moves in. That's the reason why you see a little bit of a variance there, but overall, I think the, uh, the consensus of the mean is a little more reality. Uh, I do want to mention the Canadian model, by the way. It is uh, picking up an idea of an accumulated snow more for Illinois and Indiana. Uh, it picks up on the bluegrass potential. I think that is uh, quite likely. And it tries to hint that something could fall here locally, but I still think the bluegrass area, maybe Jennings and Gen Jefferson, Jefferson County, Indiana, 
uh, may be in that zone too for maybe some light accumulations. I don't want to beat a dead horse here. This is not a big deal. This is not a big event. But for those of you that could wake up tomorrow and see a little bit of snow accumulating in your area, I don't want you to be alarmed thinking something's going wrong in the forecast or anything. It's a possibility that that could happen for those of you in the zones I just picked out. Otherwise, rain for the rest of us and a miserable rain. Then we have another weak system that may uh, impact us on Saturday. It still looks like it's going to be mainly north and east for a little bit of rain. Otherwise, not a bad weekend. I think 50s, maybe 60s by Sunday. Then next week, we really ramp up the spring-like feel outside. Monday and Tuesday, ahead of this front. This is going to be Tuesday night and Wednesday morning. Ahead of this front, there we're going to be in a very warm flow. I think we'll climb into the 70s, at least close to it on Monday. I think we'll be in the 70s on Tuesday. Then we get into Wednesday, and this is where problems come into play on temperature and precipitation. The main parent low that is attached to this front is way up here in Canada. So the front that's dragged through the Mississippi Valley is going to stall. It's going to have nothing to pull with it. So it's going to set up shop. That's going to lock us in in a south flow for several days next week. That's a warm flow and a moist flow for the area. And where we uh, see repeated bands of showers and thunderstorms, really got to watch for heavy rainfall along with some gusty thunderstorms. Now look at the forecast dew points. Uh, this is a measure of moisture in the atmosphere. We're talking about dew points climbing into the 60s by the time we get into Wednesday and Thursday and remaining there for the most part, even for the end of the week. That is a very humid atmosphere for this time of the year. And this means quite a bit of cloud cover could be in the area. It means temperatures at night, because it is humid and cloudy at times, temperatures at night may not drop much at all. So we may stay in the 60s at night, likely stay in the 60s during the day. If we get any type of mixing in the atmosphere, a little hint of sunshine, easily spike into the 70s. It's hard to determine how that's going to play out yet once we get beyond Wednesday, which days have a better chance to climb into the 70s and, and, and so forth. But the potential is there for a very warm, moist, and potentially a wet set. How wet? This is just one example from the GFS model saying that repeated rain bands may set up shop and there could be a potential for as much as a foot of rain that could fall in the Mississippi Valley with these repeated rain bands that fall in the area. Now for our area, uh, it's mainly west of 65. There could be uh, you know, two to four inches of rain potentially that could fall uh, depending on how far east these rain bands get. But you see the problem that could develop for flooding if this area does expand a little more. And again, this band, this heavy rain band, may be more to the west. It could be more to the east, or it could be right on target for the Mississippi Valley. Uh, we'll have to fine tune that as we get closer, but you see the potential here for heavy rain. As far as uh, severe weather, that's gonna be hard to determine because the cloud cover could uh, mitigate that. Uh, steady rain in the morning could mitigate that, but there is some pockets. There's gonna be several little pieces that'll rotate through that band of rain that could enhance wind fields off and on from Wednesday into Friday. It wouldn't surprise me if we get the right combination of a little bit of sun when these max winds are coming in. We've got the moisture to play. That's the easy part. The, the uh, questionable part is going to be instability, and uh, that potential is there. That's all I can really say. That's too far out to talk about severe weather. But I at least see signs that we are talking about a warm and wet and potentially a flooding scenario developing later next week. So it's something to watch carefully. In the short term, we'll be watching for some snowflakes later tonight. So welcome to March. <laughs> It's always fun and games. That's it for today. I'll see you guys later on tonight. Make sure to make uh, to make sure to make a point to watch the 5:30 show tonight and 7:30. I will be giving out the trivia question again for uh, take a good guess. And again, if you uh, it's only on Twitter. Sorry, I wish I could do Facebook, but it's only on Twitter the system works. Um, but if you're uh, able to tweet your guesses out, you will see your tweets at the bottom of the TV screen during my weather forecast, and I'll announce a winner. Um, as far as who guessed the right one, I'll pick one of you uh, to highlight at 7.30. It's no prize, but get your name on TV. That's kind of cool, right? <laughs>